Hey guys, you've just dialed into the center of the grilling universe. That's right, it's Red Hot and Ready, and I'm Beer Hat Guy. That's right, Beer Hat Guy, and I'm making beer steaks, beer spuds, beer muscles, and beer salad, because I'm Beer Hat Guy. In the backyard, I've got ale, I've got suds, I've got brewskis, I've got barley sandwiches. That's right, I'm gonna be making beer. Hey, come on back while I scratch my wart, because I'm Beer Hat Guy. Hey guys, I'm Beer Hat Guy, and I'm back. I'm called Beer Hat Guy because I have a funny beer hat on my head, and today we're gonna be cooking with beer, because I'm Beer Hat Guy. I've said this once before, but I like the sound of my own voice. I am Beer Hat Guy. Beer Hat Guy, Beer Hat Guy, Beer Hat Guy. All over the place. Beer Hat Guy, he's making beer, he's drinking beer, he's a Beer Hat Guy. Okay, let's have a drink. I can do this because I'm Beer Hat Guy. How embarrassing. But let's move on now. I'm going to be making a beer barbecue sauce today that will be accompanying our ribeye steaks, also known as the Delmonico steaks. Oh yeah, cause it's French, baby. No. Okay, shall we begin? We have two ounces of vegetable oil added to a hot pot, upon which we placed the onions. Cause that's what Beer Hat Guy does. He places onions as opposed to throwing them in the pot because he's Beer Hat Guy. That's right. Okay, one clove of garlic added to the onions. We shall saute this. That is the method of cooking whereby we make them dance in the pot. After all, Beer Hat Guy speaks French as well. Ooh la la, Beer Hat Guy says. Cause it's French, baby. Look at them dance. They dance, they do. They do the do and they do it over again because Beer Hat Guy knows French. People are crazy. Yes. Okay, let's get the heat going on this because sauteing is not sauteing if it's not dancing, I've, although I've said that before, and I'm not really French, but I have friends who are French. Well, I have one friend who's French and she costs a lot. Yeah, what are you looking at? Okay, moving right ahead. Okay, we have a little bit of, oh my goodness, this, that smells lovely. That's Worcester sauce, that's going in. That's about a tablespoon of Worcester sauce. We have some dry mustard, that's a half a tablespoon. Half a tablespoon of dry mustard is just enough for this recipe because Beer Hat Guy says so, right? And Beer Hat Guy knows how to make a beer sauce because he's Beer Hat Guy, yes. Oh, look at this. Oh my goodness, it's cider vinegar. Cider vinegar is a very important ingredient when adding this because Beer Hat Guy says so. I'm so sorry. Oh my, I have to take a walk down here. Look at this. Oh my goodness, Beer Hat Guy is excited. Okay, Beer Hat Guy has no way of getting this out of the container, so he's just gonna add the container to the pot. Okay, and once moving ahead, that was blackstrap molasses and a high degree of ceramic as well. That won't actually make it to our steaks, but if it does, that should add an interesting textural element because I'm Beer Hat Guy. Okay, into the pot, we have two pieces. Those are two pieces of brown sugar because the blackstrap molasses and the ceramic element just don't add enough sweetness because Beer Hat Guy isn't just sweet enough, isn't he? Mm. Mm-mm, no. Okay, adding to this, we got some ketchup. Ketchup, that's right, ketchup into the pot, ketchup into the pot. At this point, I think we can lift this out, wash it around, and that seemed to have worked. No more textual challenge for our steaks, kids. Okay, let's just spin it around a bit. Walking over here, getting the bat. We'll just crank that in there a bit, because I like the pepper, because I am pepper beer hat guy. You know, he's not funny. No. No. That's right, no. Oh my. When we come back, this should be all finished. We're gonna be moving on to another recipe because who am I? You got it, I don't need to say it. I'm Beer Hat Guy. Now I know a lot of you boys enjoy drinking beer, but have you ever considered actually making it? You know, it's really not that hard and after a couple times up to bat, you might even find yourself hooked. Today we're lucky to have a beer expert with us. We've got John from the brew shop, and he's gonna let us in on a couple of his secrets. Now John, you've been brewing beer for 40 years. You must have a couple of tricks up your sleeve. What's your secret weapon? Well, the cleanliness would be the big thing and uh, keep the air away from it. All right, stay with us because everything's coming to a head. It's all about finding your inner caveman here on Red Hot and Red. It's all about the meat. 
Hello kids, I'm Beer Hat Guy. Beer Hat Guy's made a terrible mistake. Beer Hat Guy did not put any beer into his recipe. Why the hell are these guys such idiots? Bad Beer Hat Guy. Our beer barbecue sauce didn't have any beer in it. So I'll tell you what, I'm bearing it up. I'm just gonna take this in the other room to let our culinary friends take care of it next door. Be right back, says Beer Hat Guy. Okay guys, look. Beer Hat Bob, or whatever the hell his name was, he's in there, I don't know what he's up to, but we got some serious work to do. Obviously he's been messing around with my recipes, dicking everything up, okay? Let's move right over here. We are going to make ourselves some kind of crazy glaze for our potatoes, right? We got some little new potatoes here, we're gonna boil them up in beer. Hey, did somebody call for some beer? I'm Beer Hat Guy, and I brought along some beer for our potatoes. Beer Hat Guy has all the beer you need. Oh, yes, beer. Okay, the secret's out, right? Okay. Beer hat guy is really me. I had a terrible accident when I was, uh, when I was a teenager and my uncle was run over by a beer truck. And it's the only way I really feel I can, you know, get to know him the way I really wish I could have gotten to know him is, you know, a 12 year old kid, man. The father figure he never had, he's looking up to him, he's just walking down the street one day. Right over. Okay, we're going after our potatoes now. We're just gonna be pouring these right in. Okay, put our root vegetables into cold water, right? Anything that grows below the earth goes into cold water, or in this case, cold beer. Moving along down the line here, okay? We got two cups of beer. This is our glaze for our potatoes. Dumping it straight in, temperature's already up, it's gonna heat up in no time. We got a little bit of sugar, that's about a quarter cup right there. You know, there is a lot of sugar in beer in the form of, of uh, malt, but you know, that just ain't enough. We wanna actually have something sticking to our potatoes here. You know, we got two tablespoons of mixed herbs, we got a little bit of butter. Don't worry if the butter floats on the top. By the time it reduces, it's all going to be together, right? It's all going to be a creamy, gooey, beery, sugary, herby mess. And that's what we're looking for in this recipe, okay? We just got to let these puppies go on their own. This guy's going to cook. This guy's going to reduce. Next, walking over here, we're going to make ourselves a vinaigrette. The vinaigrette is going out to our mescaline greens, okay? Take a look at this stuff. These are baby lettuces, okay? Baby lettuces. The whole idea of this is out there mixing all these different flavors of baby lettuces together. These are mild, like romaine, baby romaine. And then they'll throw in something like this, you know, a beet green. What the hell are they thinking? But it works, right? Okay, moving on to our vinaigrette. We are going to use some beer, obviously. Can dump that straight in. We got some Dijon mustard, right? This is gonna give it that little bit of an acidic bite that we need. You got that, Dean, that's where the Dijon mustard used to be. Beautiful. We're on the same page now, right? No. Okay, I like that. Okay. Got a little bit of sugar here, about a tablespoon. Got some mixed herbs. We got some lemon juice. That's about a quarter cup of lemon juice. And we got half a clove of garlic just minced up, okay? No big wank, just toss it in there. You realize that we're not putting these in in any particular order. That's because we're not trying to bind all this stuff together, right? We're gonna stir it up. But then when we go to use it, we're going to have to stir it up again, right? There's a difference between this kind of vinaigrette and, as I said, a bound vinaigrette, which is when you have all the fat and acid particles suspended together, creating sort of a creamy style of vinaigrette, which we could do with this, but we're not going to, okay? Let's add our oil, shall we? Hey, Quacker, you like salads? Oh, yeah. Well, don't get any ideas, because it's not enough for you, okay? Okay. Time traveling. Okay, adding a little salt to my potatoes there. This is gonna take a little while, so I've made arrangements with Cracker. I'm gonna pay him 50 cents an hour to watch this stuff while it cooks. Meanwhile, I'm heading outside. We got our steaks, we got our mussels, we got our fish. Actually, we don't have any fish, but if we had some fish, we'd be pouring beer on it too. And maybe when you come back, we'll see Beer Hat Guy. We're back and I've got Dom from the brew shop and uh, we're talking beer. Now, what do I need to know to get into this hobby? Well, a couple of short things, uh, cleanliness and uh, and lack of oxygen. Okay, and what about how much does it cost to actually start the processing and really get into the hobby? The old-fashioned way, 25 cents a bottle, the more modern uh, real wort uh, beer, 40 cents a bottle. All right. It's not all that much. $50 for the equipment, you're away. You're in business. Okay, so you're actually saving money because it's nice and cheap per bottle. Oh yeah, and it's fun. I agree. Yeah, I've been hearing about a lot, a lot of uh, recent innovations with the brewing process. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, I think the biggest, the biggest in innovations have been in the ingredients. They're now packaging uh, a, an actual real beer wort from a brewery 
which you can just uh, add a little water to, pitch the yeast, and uh, ferment very quickly, and boom, Bob's your uncle. But luckily the names will be changed to protect the innocent. So let's start the process here. Tell me exactly what I need to know to be brewing some beer. Okay, first of all, we mentioned clean, cleanliness. Um, you take your uh, um, beer, brew house beer wort, for instance. That's real wort these days. It's not the canned stuff. Okay, and what exactly is wort? Oh, wort is uh, just uh, the, the beer before it's fermented. <laughs> so therefore, you just, you just put it in your uh, open, open lid primary fermenter. Okay. Um, add a little water, pitch the yeast, let, it, let the yeast develop for about two to three days, uh, no more. Transfer it to the re relatively airless carboy with uh -huh. an air lock to keep the oxygen out. Okay. Uh, let it finish there. It'll take about two weeks. This is a pretty neat contraption. What did you say this is exactly used for? It's just a valve to allow the, uh, the gas to bubble out through but not allow the oxygen back in. Okay. Do you have any tips to save money? Uh, um, Less than $5 a dozen for real beer is, is pretty good. I like it. So what about different variations on beer? Um, can I make framboise beer at home? Framboise, I've added raspberries to that. That was a, it's an invention of the Belgians. It's really quite a bit of fun. Okay. Um, we have here a Mexican cerveza. Uh, you can make anything from a stout all the way up to a very light one. So if you follow all John's tips, you can have a nice batch of beer yourself. Thanks for helping us out, John. You're very welcome. And when we come back, we're going to be bottling it up. It's all about the me. It's all about the me. All right, so we've gone through all the brewing sets and we've done everything perfectly, and it's sitting here in the carboy for a couple of weeks. Now, how do we know when it's done? When it's finished, it's just a matter of taking a little bit out, measuring it with the hydrometer. Okay. It should read 105 or less. Add uh, a pre-measured amount of sugar and start the bottle. You guys have been drinking, haven't you? First step would be to just insert your little siphoning hose. On the other end uh, of the hose, you have your little bottle filling um, valve device. Okay, and how does that work? Works by siphon. The liquid is going to run downhill, it's going to go into the bottle, open up, fill the bottle, you lift to stop it, and go on to the next one. Cerveza. Well, that sounds pretty easy, and what better hobby is there than brewing up a nice batch of beer and kicking back with a cold one? Thanks for helping us out today, John. You're very welcome. Cheers. Cheers. Guys, we're cooking with beer. These are the muscles. This is the beer. This is the juice. This is the pot. Let's get busy, okay? What we're doing, we're making beer, juice, marinated, steamed things that are going to be good to eat. Okay, you got me? Okay. Into the pot. Okay, that's apple juice and beer. The beer is your choice, whatever you want to use, man. We got half an onion diced up here, tossing that right in. Two or three cloves of garlic, boom, into the pot. Easy as that, man. A little bit of thyme, because thyme and beer together, man, that is what it is all completely about. You got a little thyme, have some beer. Take a station break. Thank our sponsors, Flying Pig Ale. There's no life like it. We're going to reduce this down here. Singing barbecue. Out of gas. No gas. What are you doing down here? Changing the gas. You're live and gassed up. Cracker, dock the camera. There's going to be an explosion. Okay, 12 ounces of apple juice, 12 ounces of beer. Little onions, little garlic, little thyme. It's all going to be fine, man. Just got to let this come up, reduce down a little bit, throw our muscles in. It's going to be all good, man. These are going to be the most succulent muscles you have ever had in your life, okay? If that's not true, my name's not John Pritchard, and I'm not working for Big John's Barbecue Bonanza. Let's work on our uh, steaks here now, okay? These are marinating for a couple of hours now. These are looking good. Okay, put them straight down here. We're going to wipe as much of this barbecue sauce off as possible, right? Because this is just going to burn very quickly on the queue. We're going to base it every so often with it, but initially when you put it down, it gets that sear, gets that grill mark happening. You don't want as much on this as is on it now. Okay, you got me? I got it. I got it. 
Okay, let's oil these puppies down. Lots of oil, okay? Be generous with the oil. <sighs> dirty, dirty boys. Straight onto the grill, that's what I'm saying. You know what that's the sound of? I don't know. Of course you do. That's the sound of steaks going on the grill, man. You guys have been drinking, haven't you? No. Cerveza. Okay, come on in. We're getting a little bit of a rolling boil happening here, okay? Let's take our muscles. Come on over here. Hey, what are you doing there? Come on, come on, come on. Okay, these are blue muscles. I think these are from PEI. Check them out. They're not blue at all, really, so... Hey, I didn't name them, I'm just cooking them. You notice that some of these babies are open. To check if they're alive, all you have to do is click on them. If they close the shell, like this one isn't, it's dead, okay? So if your muscles aren't willing to close up, you know, ask them nicely. If they don't listen to you, smack them around a bit. If they still don't listen to you, they're in the trash, okay? For the most part, it looks like we're good here. Yeah, give them a rinse before you throw them in, too, okay? We've already done that, so I'm not gonna have to show you that. Straight in. This is gonna take about seven minutes or so, okay? So we're gonna shut these down. Give them a little shake. Wave the magic knife. We got our potatoes here that are par cooked, okay? We took these about three quarters of the way. Just a little bit squishy, you know? They're gonna continue cooking on the heat of the grill. What we wanna do first, dump them into here. Get a little bit of oil, toss that on there. We are gonna be basting them with our glaze, but the thing is the glaze does contain some sugar, so we don't want that caramelizing on the grill right away. Toss these pups up. Take it here. Don't even have to look. That's how simple it is, man. You may not want to try this at home. After all, I am a professional barbecue expert, okay? So, like... This is our beer with the butter, the sugar, the herbs. Got a little flame leaping up there. That's fine. That's going to die down in a second. Besides, they got their jackets on, right? Protective potato wear. I knew it looked familiar. They're not going to burn, you know? Where there's smoke, there's fire. And where there's fire, that's where I'm cooking. Because I'm the barbecue master. Crackers, some drinking music, please. That'll be enough, thank you. Okay, let us check out our steaks here. They're probably getting the first of a fine series of grill marks on them. Okay, I lied. What the steaks are doing is deliberately disobeying me, okay? What this requires is stern judgment on your part, okay? Look, steaks are like children. If you don't whack them a couple times, they're not gonna listen to you. And what's the matter, Robert? You never seen steak beaten before? Nothing. What do your children do? They're running around the neighborhood all times of the night, right? Smoking crack, drinking the beer, right? Getting pregnant, okay. I'm red hot and ruined. I'm off to get a beer. I suggest you do the same thing. When we come back, these things ain't gonna be give us any lip, right? Okay, guys, let's get a little bit more of this glaze on these potatoes, right? They're looking nice, man. The skins are crisping up. Got a couple grill marks, nice and golden brown. And I think they're probably cooked pretty much the rest of the way through now. So this is going to be great. Fantastic. I agree. Got a little salad happening here. Remember that beer vinaigrette you made? Now's the time for that, right? Look at this. Mm-mm. Beery goodness, straight into the bowl. These are going on to our mescaline greens. Mescaline is basically just French for a mixture, right? It's a mixture of salad greens that come in the spring of the year. Although now mescaline is just basically termed any sort of mixed baby lettuces. Okay, as I said, this is all mescaline to me, man. Hello. This is nothing like the mescaline I did in 75, man. The bees are karma. Back to the grill. These babies are ready to come off. Look at this. A perfect medium rare right there. How do we know it's medium rare, okay? You feel that? Grab your hand, put your thumb and forefinger together. Don't squeeze. Grab right here. Feel what that feels like. That's medium rare. As you tighten it up incrementally, it gets to a more well done doneness. 
but relaxed together, that muscle right there, that's exactly how medium rare feels if you touch a steak. Easy, huh? This one, we got medium right there. Let's get these spuds off, okay? By the time these babies come off, the muscles are going to be ready, I can tell. You can just smell them. Okay, guys, that's beautiful. This is ready to go. Let's take a look at our muscles. Perfect. Once you get to the open stage, you, you don't want to keep boiling them too much, right? Because the muscles are going to toughen up. As soon as they're open, take them off. Let's check these out. Do you want a Dean? Hey, Dean, you want a muscle? Sure. OK. There you are. Do you need anything? And for those who don't know, here's a kind of interesting technique. When you're eating muscles, you don't need a knife or a fork or anything. All you need is the first shell that you opened. Reach inside the other muscle and use this as a pair of pincers, right? Just like that. Now, I really shouldn't be doing this because I'm almost certain that Melissa's favorite food is pretty much mussels. Now, she's talking about mussels this, mussels that. Last night I had a great muscle. No. So, come with me, though. I wonder where she is. <laughs> Melissa, where did you come from? Well, I came to see all the lovely food you've been cooking for me. Well, look what I've done, okay? We got a beer barbecue sauce marinated mm. steak, ribeye steak, we got beer glazed potatoes, we got beer poached mussels, Yum. and over here, we got a fantastic beer vinaigrette on some mescaline yeah. salad greens. What do you think? What's the verdict on this? Oh my God, it's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> um, this is like the best salad I've ever had. You should, yeah, yeah. Hey guys. Can I smell my tooth? Oh crap. Guys, take a look at this. For the younger members of our viewing audience, any idea what this looks like? It looks like a muscle, John. A muscle. Yes, it does. Very fishy. Hmm. Watch out, boys. She's lethal. <laughs> That's funny. Yo, there's only one reason she's liking this so much. Because we're red hot and ready. The home of smoky good eats. <laughs> <laughs>